Coming to you live from New York City, it's Jim Caruso's Pajama Cast Party. And now, here's your host, Jim Caruso. It's Monday. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I enjoy Mondays. Gives me a reason to live through the rest of the week. How are you? <sighs> Welcome to Pajama Cast Party. We have such a great show for you tonight. I know I say that every week, but I mean it every week. Uh, tonight's guests, Jeremy Stoll, Tamisha Harris, Mike Wartella, and Brandon Bain. The talent is so off the charts, people. You're going to love it. I'm glad you're here. A um, lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. Some things coming up that I want to tell you about. <clears throat> that I'm going to kind of race through this. Uh, this coming week, this Friday, Billy Stritch and I will be co-hosting Stars in the House with Seth Rudetsky and James Wesley. The topic, Birdland and Cast Party. How fun is that? Um, so many thanks to Seth for inviting us. Uh, Friday, March 8th at 8 p.m., we're going to put a fabulous cast together. I don't know who it is yet, but we're about to do that. Um, just go to starsinthehouse.com. If you haven't watched them, they are brilliant and hilarious. And if they don't get an honorary Tony from doing this, they've made so much money for the Actors Fund from the very, very beginning of the, of the shutdown. Seth literally started like two days after the shutdown, uh, doing these uh, online shows. They are incredible, star-studded, funny, informative, just great. So that's this coming Friday. March 12th, two things going on. First thing I'm gonna tell you about is a beautiful benefit that's going to be hosted and produced by our good friend, Julie Lynn Halston. I think I can't explain it quite like she does. And I feel like we need her. Oh, Julie, Julie. Oh, Jim. <laughs> oh, Jim. No, no, I'm over here. You're, you're looking the wrong, uh, we're both looking oh, the wrong Jim. way. Yeah, there I am. Hello, how are you? I'm just so used to Ruby, you know. Doing I know. It Honey. How are how you? How are you? I love that. First of all, can I just say, I remember the very first pajama cast party because I was on it. You were. I, I think I was reading something from Joan Crawford, which, you know, I love to do. I know. Um, <laughs> I love anyway. when you do that. Uh, what, darling? I love when you do that. I thought you would be so fun. First of all, <clears throat> tonight, you know, Julie, we do exactly what you do on um, on virtual Halston. We collect money. Uh, we take tips, uh, donations, whatever you want to call them. For sometimes it's the actors' funds. Sometimes it's it's Broadway Cares. Tonight we're accepting money for the PFF. Uh, first of all, thank you. And you were the one who suggested when we started Virtual Halston to give a portion to the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation. People might say, what is the PFF? Yeah. And what are you doing on March 12th? Well, Jim and I and Ruby are going to be doing a very special Virtual Halston. Every year I do a huge gala. Usually it's in a live venue situation to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation. This year, of course, it's going to be virtual. And we thought, what a great opportunity to blend. Yes, there we are, to blend uh, virtual Halston and um, the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation. So thank you for this. And thank you for, of course, co-hosting with me on March 12th. Oh, I can't and wait. Tell it's about so some of the stars, some of the people that will be involved. Christy Nebersole, Andrew Rannells, Darlene Love, Max Von Essen. Do you, have you heard of them? They're hacks. They're hacks. Have you heard of them? You're hacks. You're hacks. Andrew Rannells, terrible. A newbie. Yeah. 
Um, Darlene Love, who? Yeah. Really? Who? Yeah, only uh, uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, Robert Creighton, who was with us every year, his mother passed away from the disease. So you might say to yourself, okay, now I've heard of cystic fibrosis. I've never heard of pulmonary fibrosis. They're both, of course, lung diseases. Pulmonary fibrosis is not necessarily a rare and orphan disease. In fact, 200,000 people are living with it right now, all the time, 50,000 cases each, each year. With the COVID-19 crisis, what they're finding is that pulmonary fibrosis is, is, is happening in the lungs of people who get the virus. And what it is, is right. a hardening of your lungs and you can't breathe and it is fatal. And my husband, Ralph Howard, many men in New Yorkers knew who Ralph Howard was. He was the anchor man for 1010 Wins for many, many years. He also worked with Howard Stern. He was really known as the voice. And he developed the disease. We don't know where he got it, what it was from. That's the, the real tragedy is he, uh, it's idiopathic. They don't have a, a known cause, but they do know that people who develop it cannot breathe and it is fatal unless you get a lung transplant and then you have a certain amount of years that you can live. Ralph was so lucky. He, um, he had an extra eight years and it was really miraculous, but ultimately he passed away from complications from the disease. So what is so great about the tips for tonight, you know, if you're going to tip tonight and you should. And they will. <laughs> and they will because this is such a great show. My phone's already ringing. I can't. There, there you go. Things there are happening. Go. They're happening, Julie. They're happening already. I love it. Um, thank you, by the way. Thank you so much. And thank you to Jim. And I will. I want to tell people, Jim was the person who really encouraged me to do virtual Halston. I didn't want to do it. I wanted to sleep for four months. He encouraged me. He was also the one who said, Julie, you should be doing this for your charity, Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation. And how much yeah. have you raised? I mean, every year you thousand. raise. No, oh. thousand. Yeah. Uh, it, I, but over the last, like last year was, wasn't it? $400,000. I mean, that's fantastic. It's crazy. But here's the thing. It all goes to the patients and the caregivers. And we've opened, I think, 68 care centers across the United States so that people get all the access to all the medical help that they so need. So this is really important, you guys. I mean, it's always important. Uh, but this this week, I feel like it's uber important. And we, we, um, we kindly ask for your donations. If you have it, if you have some extra, some people don't have extra. That's okay too. Just sit back, relax, and calm down. Uh, exactly. And you know, 10, 20, 25, 50, 100, 200, five dollars. A million. Anything, it all helps. A million. A million. A million, helps. Julie, and I will come to your home and perform an act you won't believe. I, you know what? I, I'll do everything I've ever written, bad and good. I'll do it all. <laughs> Um, okay. It's really true. But if you can't, we understand. But if you can, please do. You are literally helping get oxygen to people, helping the caregivers. It's very hard on the families. I know I took care of Ralphie, as you know, Jim, for many years when he was was the last couple of years of his life. He was really struggling. He, he was really immobile and it was really tough. So, I mean, you take breathing for granted. You really do. You really it's, do. You don't even think it's one of those things you don't think about. Um, well, and when you, yeah. And when you can't breathe, hello. So hello. please be generous tonight. You know, it's well, I'm excited be about show. this show. We're putting this huge grand finale together. Julie, it's going to be so good. I'm so excited. And thank you for all the help that you do for, for me. I mean, please. literally. You know, you, you got me through the pandemic, Jim. It's really true. I wouldn't have put on my lashes and 
I, I just wouldn't have done it. And you look so. You have a new camera too. Let's hear it for the. Let's I hear it for Julie's camera. camera. Listen, darling, my ring light went on the fritz last night. I had to. I had an audition this morning. I had to get a ring light from a from who could resist Julie Halston? Oh, my Venmo was on the way. Thank you, Jeffrey. Um, I had to get a, a new ring light from a, a from a neighbor. It was crazy. <laughs> Someone is working on my new ring light as we speak. And I had to order a new ring light, which hopefully oh. will come tomorrow through the Amazon magic. It's just crazy. But luckily, I had a loom cube. I had an extra loom cube tonight. So there we have These are it. all things we knew nothing about a year ago today. I but we learned fast. I wouldn't we say the word loom cube. In fact, I felt it sounded rather dirty. Somebody's doing something with a loom cube. And now everyone has a loom cube. Um, it's true. Jim, I have one right have here. A wonderful show tonight. Thank I you, love, my friend. I love, Ruby's, I love Ruby's new hair. She's got new so hair. cute, right? We have so to talk cute. about that. Yeah. We're going to bring her in right now. Julie Lynn, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it was a last minute idea, but I'm so happy you were you were there. Thank you. And thank you to all your viewers and listeners. And I love you all. I really do. I really do. We love you, Julie. <laughs> That was Julie Lynn Halston. Uh, the show is going to be so good, uh, her benefit. Um, also, I do want to say before we bring Ruby out, uh, I want to say thanks to Kevin Gershon for including us this week in his Entertainment Tonight moment on 1010 Wins. Speaking of 1010 Wins, he's so kind to us. And um, they they do their, their Entertainment Tonight moment with the music and everything. And he's so good to include us almost every week. How great is that? Um, okay, oh, before I bring Ruby up, um, Billy, uh, no, not Billy, uh, Liza Minnelli. <laughs> She's about to turn 75, which I personally can't believe, but there's a huge online extravaganza celebrating her 75th birthday, the same night as the uh, PFF uh, benefit right afterwards. Uh, it's an incredible cast. Joel Gray, Lily Tomlin, Cheetah, Harry Connick, Billy Stritch, Jonathan Groff, Sandra Bernhard, Nathan Lane, uh, Andrea Martin. Thanks to Daniel Nardiccio and Matt Berman for inviting me and for inviting Billy to be part of it. We're going to have a blast. More about that next week. Oh, Ruby. Oh Jim, okay. That oh hello. Feels it feels better when you call me in like that. When, yeah. when you when cute you cute hair. Me... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> we're we're losing the top of your head. Other than that, we're fine. Maybe you didn't want us to see. Oh, there it is. Um, again, we do this show <laughs> because why, Ruby? We enjoy it. It makes me get ready on a Monday. Um. I did my hair for the for the people. Truly, I mean, yep. It, that it, was for Daniel Wartella, wasn't it? <laughs> Don't lie. Um, but mostly me. Of course, uh, for you. Yeah, uh, we love doing this. We love entertaining you. And again, we love collecting for incredible organizations uh, that we know and love, like the PFF Foundation how great you can do it by venmo you can do it by paypal you can oh what do you call it when you subscribe subscribe that's what you call it you call it subscribing or subscribe if you're, to us or if you're watching on facebook jim get ready i know you love this please share um just share a little you could share now like right this second if you you're could, watching us on facebook that means that everybody you know finds out about us. You could share right now. And if Cher is watching for some reason, Cher could share. It's <sighs> very meta. I mean, nothing would make me happier in life. Um, our friend Squiggs, yes. Justin Squiggs Robertson is busy sketching away. He does these incredible quick sketches of all of us during this show. While somebody sings, he's just drawing like mad. Um, and I love it when you show us what he's doing. Can you show us? Putting my glasses on. Absolutely. Put, put that camera on. The camera on that's right over his shoulder. Okay, put on your glasses. Oh! Oh, dear Lord. 
Oh, God. It's so Look great. at your hair. It's totally bouncing. He and always behaving. gives me the best hair. Truly. I'm forever thankful. Look, there he is. Oh, look. And, and me, I get the longest chin. <laughs> so good. <laughs> okay, so we'll check in on him later. Yes, and absolutely. I look, I look like this. Oh, that's... <laughs> That's not actually too far off, Jim. That's I know. I'm kind of impressed. It's a little Stan Laurel for you <laughs> old people out there. Okay, let's do this, Ruby. Are you let's ready? Do this. Well, I do just want to say Squigs, his website is down below. As oh, yes, 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 yes. And also, um, we have, I'm, I'm going to do this spiel for a second because we have amazing goodies that you can purchase on pajamacastparty.com. You can go to Ye Old Gift Shopee. Um, Jim usually likes to call it fabulous crap. I think that makes it a little less than enticing. <laughs> so I'm going to say we have amazing goodies. Doesn't that sound better than fabulous crap? I I'm going to say- Better than a load of crap? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to stick with amazing goodies. Um, we also have a candle. Jim, I saw recently that you posted we sold 300 candles so far. Basically, That's a lot of wax. Basically, we're becoming a Bath and Body Works, but we sing while we, you know, while we sell the candles. Um, so you can go to the website here if you'd like to purchase a cast party candle. Um, all of this basically helps our our show continue. And as always, your tips are so greatly appreciated, and they mean the world to us. And That's tonight right. we're going to the PFF Foundation, who I've been working with them for almost a year now because Julie got me involved, and they are absolutely incredible changing people's lives and they need that money more than anything so we thank you all so much beautifully said thank you i'm going away now okay goodbye um and and feel free to make little comments over over there over there on the side if you're uh, watching on it's actually down there for all the places it's the comments it is? Mm -hmm. the com we see the comments on the side because we're in oh. the producing hub but everybody else comments we're in the producing hub you guys okay very fancy okay going away for real now okay okay are you ready <clears throat> my first guest starred as the phantom on broadway I mean, I want people to say that about me. Uh, uh, he's performed with some of the finest symphonies across the world, and his records sell like crazy. Please welcome Jeremy Stoll. Hi. How are you? I'm so good. How are you? I'm great. It's good to see you. I love your smile. You just, you're just the great. You're a shit, and it's so nice to see you. Oh, God. My dentist will be so happy to hear that. <laughs> I'm so happy to see. Where where am I finding you? You live here in New York, right? I do. I do I live in New York. Yeah. Yeah. I, um. Yeah. I mean, I'm in Midtown, so I'm in. I. I oh. Get, like like you, I get to watch my favorite restaurants close on a, on the daily. <laughs> Have you lost some favorites? I know. Yeah. It's very depressing. Well, we'll see. I don't know. I think a lot of them have those just momentarily, and then they'll come back. Like I, I feel Kitchen. like. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna come back and it's gonna come back bigger than ever. We're gonna have the Roaring Twenties. It's gonna be it's gonna be great. Of course, after the Roaring Twenties was the Depression, so that's fun. Um, okay, <laughs> we're doing that. As I was saying that, I was thinking maybe that's not what we want. Okay, we first met when you were doing the Phantom on Broadway. Uh, mm -hmm. You've played lots of roles in that show. Oh, look at that! What? I mean, it's nice makeup. Yeah, it's nice. It's very kind of. Uh, you've played lots of roles in the show. Tell me about your history with with the show. Uh, my history with the show. Well, I I was actually I went in for an audition um, under protest because I didn't want to do the business anymore. I had been in for Phantom so many times I was done, and then I uh, I went into an audition of ten people randomly for the tour. And at the end of it, they said, actually, we're going to put you in the Broadway show. And I uh, would like you to do The Phantom and Rowl. And uh, a few years back, a few years later, they they realized I had a higher top. So I became a, a Pionji cover as well, the uh, the high tenor. But oh I had God. to, they built me a big, big huge fat suit. that It's hysterical. So because they wanted 300 plus pounds. So I had, I have, I, <laughs> I put on this suit and a little bowling ball with a tic-tac sticking on top because my head's so long and 
it's uh, it's hilarious. Joyous. You know, I had to do Santa Claus once when I was in college, and there is something weird about that kind of a suit with a very long, thin face on top that looks, it's disturbing, really, is what it is. Um, I love that, you, that you've been the Phantom. It's just my favorite thing. Now, you've also released a CD of a live performance in China. What the oh, yeah. heck? Yeah. How did that happen? Yeah. Well, I started doing, I, I wanted, I, it was my dream to be in concert. And uh, I started doing concerts with a band called Bravo Michi years back. And then I went on my own and I, I put a band together called the Unreachable Stars. And we have, uh, we, we tour the country at the performing arts and we got a Chinese tour to have two years in a row. Uh, and that was the end of our tour in Chungcheong where we had it recorded and we put it out. Um, we actually are gonna start up again in Wichita, Kansas, uh, at an outdoor theater for- That's not in China. Uh, that's not in China, no. Okay. We're, okay. Uh, yeah. My, my bands, we're, we're gonna come back for the first time after this whole year break uh, to do a big outdoor gig in Wichita in May. Very excited. Is we, that with our friend Heather? A lot Heather? of fun. We'd... Heather, no. I wish with our friend Heather. She's actually in London, um, yes. and she will be about two weeks from birth from her new baby at that point. Oh so she's okay. decided that she wants to concentrate on that, maybe. <laughs> Might so. be a good idea. That's fantastic. What's the audience in China like? It, it, is it like an audience here, or is it what? It's not what do we need to know? Close. It's, it's not that they're there. Uh, the audiences in China they vary. We went to twenty three cities all over the all over the um, the country, and they varied from town to town depending on what kind of experience they've had to Western culture at all. Um, the government wants to. It's part of a, a musical enrichment program. They're bringing bands and acts out there to expose them to. Uh, musical theater, American musical theater. And it, that did so well that now they're bringing a lot of the big shows, such as Phantom of the Opera. And they're all touring in these venues that we we did the year prior. Um, given it, and the audiences are very appreciative. They're they're rather young. They want the kids to be exposed. So they it would be mm -hmm. like two parents and and two or plus two or more kids, not not their kids, but they'll bring their friends. But it was, we played a lot for younger audiences, except for in the big cities like Beijing and uh, Shanghai. We would, it was, it was kind of a black tie affair in those nights. And then there would be kids. It was wild. And do they wild. know this material? Are they familiar with Broadway songs? They know or some is of it? it. They know yeah. some of it. They know the math. Obviously, would everybody knows that? Um, some of them they sing along. We actually sang two songs in Mandarin Chinese. Asked us to learn some of theirs, so we we did, and uh, they sang along with. Of course, it was, it was a blast. They, that is commitment. We had a good time. Had a good time. Yeah. I bet. Well, you also exactly. have a beautiful CD called "In the Moment." Um, the moment, get it? The this is the moment. I get it. <laughs> Uh, those Phantom uh, fans are rabid, aren't they? They're amazing, actually. They're, I, I, I love them my whole heart. They're so great. They just they eat, breathe, and sleep Phantom, and they love anything about it. And they're just so it's positive. They're they're a light in life, I think. Especially, and now. I feel like you being a, a, such a big part of that show, they'll be with you forever. I mean, that's really that's an incredible thing for you yeah thanks yeah I, I i think so i um they visit all the time and uh not i mean not, not currently but there's a lot of fans that come several times a year and they yeah. stay at the store and we have conversations and they're just this the nice. most random people really connect with the show and it's fun to hear their yeah. stories and why they like it and what they do in life and, and it's i love them as you oh. know I want you to sing for us. What are you going to do? <laughs> um, <clears throat> I uh, well, When we're on tour, we 
we sing a lot of the big songs and we we try to make them bigger and we have a big blast with it but i i also write songs because i'm silly i like to write humor songs and things that are about me uh i grew up in a uh, cow town in california uh and and then i came to broadway um in in that order but the, the, my crossover in my life there isn't much there's not a lot of country music but i always tend to do songs that sound country but have the uh have a, a silly flair like me and they have uh, the, the subject's always about broadway so I, I write songs that are a little country a little broadway and a little me and uh this I, is what could be four. better for pajama cast party <laughs> awesome yeah. sing for us uh, do you want me to start let's do it okay when i was young Meet some girls, I learned to play guitar. I started with the classics. But they were much too hard. Then one day I found a bunch of tunes that I could play. The greatest book of songs I'd seen, the hits of old Broadway. I went to school to show the girls the songs that I adore. I learned them all within a week. They all had the same four chords. Nighttime sharpens, heightens each sensation. Think of me, think of me fondly, and we said goodbye on my own, pretending he's beside me. Do you hear the people sing, singing the song of angry men? Dancing, can you feel the love tonight? Don't stop believing. Hold on to that feeling. Little shop, little shop for a little shop, little shop of terra sherry, sherry baby sherry, sherry baby. Started hanging out a ton. Did facials, nails, and went to sales at Forever 21. Looking back on those times with them, I realized today they never really dated me because they thought that I. I knew that was coming. <laughs> Every song needs to end that way. I, I've said that you at cast party. 
Did you really? <laughs> I've sat at a cast party for years. Every song, it, I could be Satin Doll. It could be Moon River. It needs the Alpha Bell War Jingle Cry Bell. at the end. Jingle oh, Bells, that's right. Alpha Bell War Cry. Did you know it was called the Alpha Bell War Cry, by the way? I did not know. Yeah, it's called the Alpha Bell War Cry. See, see, you learn things here at Pajama Cast Party. Right. We are entertaining and informative. We're infotaining. That's it. War Jeremy, cry. so happy to see you. Thanks, man. It's good to see you too. Thanks for entertaining us so royally. And uh, we'll see you around uh, Midtown soon, I hope. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, hopefully with masks off soon. I know. Your vaccine know. come to you. I know. Yes. Except you have that really cool mask that goes, Ruby, throw that up again. That's a really good mask. <laughs> okay. she's She left town. Not um, I definitely like, This one. This one. Yeah. Um, thank you. you. I'll see you very soon. Jim, be well. Good to see you. You too. Take care. <laughs> Ruby was like, what is he talking about? I didn't leave town. I just texted you. My screen froze for like 15 seconds. I'm How back. How dare you? How I'm dare back. you? I'm okay. so sorry. Producer down, but she's back. Oh, God, don't say that. Okay. <clears throat> but wait. There's more. Um, okay, get this. I'm about to introduce you to get your pencils out. A dancer, singer, actor, puppeteer, acrobat, stunt performer, stilt walker, choreographer, costume designer, burlesque diva. And I thought I was the only one that did all that. Uh, she's currently starring at the Orlando Shakes in Josephine, a gorgeous celebration of Josephine Baker. Here she is, Tamisha Harris. <laughs> With that intro, you made me sound like I do all the things. <laughs> you do, well, you do all the things. <laughs> well, you know, I don't do them well. No, I'm just kidding. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. I didn't mention, you know, the, the quality of it all. How are you? Ah, I'm good. I'm really, really good. Des you know, despite all the things, I have been lucky enough and fortunate, and uh, I'm working at the moment. So I'm, I know you are. I'm happy. <laughs> and not with puppets. And not with puppets at the moment. What? What's <laughs> happening? Well, first of all, can we please explain the puppets? What did you do? I was lucky enough to work with Heather Henson, who is Jem Henson's daughter. Yes. Uh, and I fell into it. I I fell into her lap. Somebody told me about this lady's looking for a, a dancer. And she asked me to come in and I walked in and they were like, she's kind of granola and kind of, uh, <laughs> you know, and I was like, whatever. Okay. So she asked me to come in and work with, she had on this like paper mache deer, right? Kind of this object paper mache. And I, she goes, well, let me see how you move with it and dance with it. And I... Oh my God. I shift shaped it and, and morphed and boogied and, and made this little deer come to life. And I found it really, really relaxing and really, I guess, you know, I guess it's cathartic because it was every time she had a new project, we had the same kind of working project, but we got to develop it differently. And I got to see the developing stages of all this and put it together. Oh, so how much I, fun. I loved it. I did it for quite a number of years. I have so many friends here that work on Sesame Street that just, yeah. I mean, they're just mad for that company. And yeah. I'm so jealous. I want to visit. Once all this is over and we, we can actually leave our homes, I want to go visit Sesame Street. I think that would be the coolest I think thing. I would like to do that. Maybe I'll make my trip to uh, New York and do that. Okay. That'd be I'll, great. I'll hook us up. This city in ages. Well, come on up. You're in Florida, correct? I am in Florida. Now, you were born and bred there. I was born and bred in El Paso, Texas. You're kidding. No. Dallas. Yes. Lived in Dallas 18 years. Nice. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, I have so much to talk to you about. Your early credits include assistant choreographing and dancing backup for InSync. 
What? <laughs> I was fresh meat from El Paso too, actually. That was my first gig. The choreographer that we knew, uh, he got this job and he was like, oh yeah, girl, there's these kids that are, they're the new best thing. And I was like, whatever, I need the job. I don't even watch Mickey Mouse Club anymore. You know, I was like, sure, sure, sure. And it turns out to be in sync, Lance and Chris, Lance had just joined the group and I was his liaison to the rhythm, to the rhythm world. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that your 90s must have been unbelievable is all i can say um, you must have been like right on the cutting edge of all that great pop fun it orlando was you know what sold it they said orlando was going to be the next hollywood the next big right. thing and so i <laughs> i believed it <laughs> yeah and well. i came and and i did i did everything i possibly could how fun oh my gosh okay more importantly Next. or more more currently you've created a one woman biographical musical about the legendary Josephine Baker now i want everybody to see actual Josephine Baker so they know what we're talking about look at that goddess <laughs> and now here you are what well, i never really looked at them side to side before that's kind of cool hello Oh. Nice skirt, nice banana skirt. I did my best. <laughs> now tell me, how did you become infatuated with, with Josephine? You know, if I was honest, if I had realized where she had been working in my subconscious and my psyche since I was about 17, but lo and behold, I go through all these different stages of, you know, puppeteer, still walker, blah, 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 blah. And I get to the point where I needed something. I needed something to showcase what can I do? What's going to challenge me? What's going to be the next thing? And Josephine Baker comes into the conversation and we dove right in. And at the time we were creating her or creating the show, I should say, it was 2015. So a lot was going on in America. <laughs> a little bit of a lot of things politically and, yes. you know, things were coming to a head and to a point uh, uh, and a starting point of boiling, you know, uh, and I really felt that her message was strong. Oh my gosh. I uh, mean, she was the first black woman to star in a major motion picture. Mm -hmm. um, uh, she was in the Folie Berger in Paris. She aided the French resistance during she World War II. Why she was, she adopted 12 children. Uh, I, and, and I actually can say that uh, when she was, when she died, Princess Grace Kelly, Yes. Princess Grace Kelly was the person who took her in after she was, after most of her possessions were sold off, right? And she was left out destitute in that famous picture where she's on the doorsteps and is burned into my memory. But anyway, great, uh, Princess Grace Kelly and Josephine Baker had a specific relationship unto their own. And our next, our next sneak preview, our next sister piece is about the relationship between Josephine Baker and Grace Kelly. Fantastic. It's, it's gonna be, oh, I, it's. Oh. <laughs> well, many, I mean, people don't know that she was so important as a civil rights advocate. Yes. Um, she would oh, only, she would not perform for segregated audiences. And she was the only woman to speak uh, at yes. the Martin Luther King uh, 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 March on Washington. Yes, sir. I mean, that is, that talk about ahead of her time. Ahead of her time, and and in the play, we use her quotes. We use her quotes that stand the test of time that are speaking to us right now. I bet. I, I bet. mean, it's. It oh gosh, me. I want to see your show. Oh, I can't wait. I, it has to be a big smash down there uh, in Florida, and then you have to bring it here. That's you know, all. Uh, yes, 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 and yes. yes I'm also okay, non equity. Good. I'm non equity, so I kind of have an in. Uh, <laughs> <for sure. laughs> they can sing for us. Would you me. do? They can use me. <laughs> would you do something for us? Would you sing? Oh, yeah. I think I'll sing a little, a uh, little bit from the show. Do it. Oh my gosh. Get this. I have my mock pajamas on. <laughs> I appreciate it. Very glammy. My mock pajamas and my wine. Very glad. <laughs> Your mock wine. My mock wine. Blue skies smiling at me. Nothing but blue skies. 
eyes do I see blue birds singing a song nothing but blue birds all the day long never saw the sun shining so bright never saw things going so right noticing the days hurrying by when you're in love my how they fly oh blue days all of them gone nothing but blue skies from Oh my gosh, you're so much fun to watch. You sound so gorgeous. There was a little glitch with the Wi-Fi, so we were a little out of sync, but we didn't even care. Oh. We, could, we could hear you and we could see you and you are a blast. I know our, our friend Eric Garbus tells us uh, in the comments that it's already been a big hit. And oh. so I'm, I'm so happy for you. I love me some Eric Garbus. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. I see. I think I think he called me today. <laughs> he did. Oh, that's so funny. I think he did. But uh, he was. I, I, he worked with us at Birdland for years. Really? That okay? That yeah. totally makes sense. Yep. 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 And that's how I met Joey Fatone. Let's say it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you have to get your yourself to New York City soon. Oh, I hope so. I can't way wait. Way too much fun. I will like to wait until it is um, warmer. Yes. I am very okay. good at warm in the heat. <laughs> However, I can't wait. We'll wait. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you know any friends, tell your friends. Come see the show. If you know any enemies, tell them come see the show. It'd be great. I, I, absolutely. They don't have to like me. They just need to come see the show. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> great. Thank you, my friend. My new friend. <laughs> Thank you. How much fun. Uh, we Ruby, we need to get that and, and splice it so that it works it better. Yeah. Um, that was fun. Don't forget, we are collecting tonight for the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation, an incredible organization that brings life-changing oxygen to people who need it and takes care of the patient and the caregiver, which is enormous. Uh, so we'll be doing that with your uh, donations tonight. Thank you for that. Okay. Mike Wartella is a Broadway veteran. He's been starring in shows like Wicked and Tuck Everlasting, but I first saw him as Mike TV in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Uh, he blew me away. You're going to love him. Here's Mike Wartella. 
Jim. What's up? Hi, buddy. How are you? Good, man. How are you? Good. Where am I finding you? I am in my home county in the Berkshires in Massachusetts, believe it or not. You live in the Berkshires? That's so nice. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm back oh, up great. here. Well, so happy to see you. Um, great. You know, I got my first glimpse of you in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I know you did stuff before that, but I think that was the first time I saw you. Uh, you played Mike TV. Sure One did. Those, Brett, look at <laughs> you. First of all, nice hair. Yeah, yeah. Based Second on the all. real thing, just yeah. over-exaggerated. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I've had that hair. Um, uh, one of the bratty kids that goes to on the, the Wonka tour, and you were strapped onto every kind of uh, social media thing. You had iPads and cell phones and stuff. It was so much fun. <laughs> yeah. But just, just a horrible child. You have a son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First of all, I don't know how, what are you, like 12? Yeah. Um, yeah. How old was he during the run of that show? I believe he was 10, nine going on 10. And it's funny, you're like, Mike TV, horrible child. I've often been quoted in saying, a lot of him was based on my own son. <laughs> nice. But don't get me wrong, my kid's the best and he's amazing. Um, there he is, oh, buddy, Hunter. I mean, that <laughs> face. Hilarious. Well, that face. Well, he was a big part of your run. You did a, you did a, 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 a an online show called TV Time, and he was yeah. a big part of that. Yeah, he was. He was around at that time a lot, and he wanted to be involved in it. And, you know, that's the part that's based on him, is that he's heavily involved in this generation's obsession with electronics and video games and vlogging and YouTube and what's up, guys? All that jazz, you know? <laughs> so, How old is he now? Of, he's How now 12. Going to be 13 soon. I can't. Oh, my God. And his name's Hunter. Yeah. Yep. Does he want to be in show business? I get that he wasn't into the show business of it. No, not at all. It, but you know, he's uh, <laughs> he was discussing with me today about what specifically makes him cringy in performance, <laughs> oh, and unfortunately, musical theater happens to be one of those things. <laughs> I'm glad I mean, he I'm didn't say you, that we Jim Caruso guy. Yeah, we were sitting there watching YouTube videos. I was like, so Freddie Mercury live this? He's like, yeah, this is good. I was like, what about this Broadway performance? Yeah, no, see, I feel weird all of a sudden. They're acting. <laughs> well, oh there you go. Gosh, I love it. so funny. Not for everyone. Is he, is, does he critique your performances? Often. I mean, a lot of Mike TV, you know, the, the fun part of getting to create any show is that you're involved in the writing and the creation and you have a little bit of say. And so there would be lines that I would call and tell him and I'd be like, so buddy, this line's in the show. And he'd go, no, 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 no. You wouldn't say that. I would say this. And I would come to the writer the next day and he'd be like, great, it's in. So a lot of Hunter's lines are in the show. <laughs> I love this so much. Your passion for that kid is so obvious. Oh. Uh, it, uh, you guys have to follow Mike on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, just, to, just to see Hunter, really. Yeah. It's really not about Mike. No, no, just follow um, uh, I loved you in Chasing Rainbows. Now that's a musical that uh, was at Paper Mill Playhouse. Yeah. Um, essentially the Judy Garland story. And right. you played Mickey Rooney with flame red hair. Yes, yeah, that was a, a different production, I believe. But yep, I, that one I actually dyed my hair for. Eventually it became a wig, thank God. Oh, that's your hair? That's my real hair. That was down in Flat Rock Playhouse when we did that. Man, that is some red. Yeah, it was tough. Uh, but when I saw it, you were absolutely tapping your feet off. Uh, you. yeah. You're a great dancer. And that ridiculous cast, Ruby, who I've known since she was a little girl. I've seen her perform at Birdland with you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Max Von Essen. He's kind of well, talented. Uh, Leslie Margarita. The cast was just fabulous. What a ball. It was a great, great show. It was a great production of it. We've been working on that one for a lot of years. Um, and that was one of my favorite productions. Thank you for saying that about the tapping. I will confess that like, woof, I'm not great at it. I It was one of those things, truly, you know, this is the beauty of Broadway, but like for people who watch things like Dancing with the Stars, where they take a football player with two left feet and they turn him into a ballroom dancer, that's what they did. You know, Dennis and his associate like got me in a room for four hours a day by myself, every day, sweating, 
arguing. <laughs> like the, I was like, I can't do the full step. I'm going to have to do a modified. No, you're going to do the full. And they were right. They got me up there. So thank God for those two. Cause Oh God. Well, fun. you fooled me. And but, of course I'm one of the finer dancers. <clears throat> um, okay. The the last thing you were involved with there is a show called The Wanderer. This was at Paper Mill Playhouse. And I don't know the answer to this. What's happening with The Wanderer? The Wanderer is one of my favorite, favorite things I've ever done. There he is, Dion, the man in, himself. Um, the Wanderer we actually did not yet do at Paper Mill. It was slated to happen literally like the month after we all went into quarantine. Right. So that's been sort of on hold. We've had lots of meetings. At this point, it is still ready to go when we're oh, all good. back. Everyone is very, very excited to do it. Um, the team's all on board. The cast is all on board. I play Dion DiMucci in the show, famous singer of, you know, Run Around Sue and The, the Wanderer and Teenager in Love. And um, a really, really deep story, really, really intense story, something that I feel a lot of passion for and probably one of my all-time favorite things to ever do. It's it's got to be an incredible score. I didn't realize all of those were Dion. He's kind of me an un, to me an unsung hero on the rock and roll scene. Uh, I I was not. I did. I I also didn't know that he sang Abraham, Martin, and John. That's didn't right. Didn't know that was him. Sort of his comeback hit. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then that flew to number one for yeah. forever. Um, you're a songwriter. You've done evenings of your 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 original music around town. Um, does the the theatricality of your day job on Broadway um, inform your original music? Yeah, it does. Um, I think the truth is most of what my original stuff started to come out of was a craving to have my own voice because as much as I loved doing everything I was getting to do, you know, it's their, it's their work. They wrote it. Right. They, they direct it, you know, it's their character and um, you only get so much. And so for me, especially, you know, I played a lot of kids. <laughs> I got played kids and sweet faced, youthful, innocent types. And there was a whole other part of my personality that just wasn't getting expressed. Um, so I started writing, you know, from the heart, some rock and roll stuff and had some time to finally put together an album, which is now out on Spotify and all those things. So thank God for that. Um, so what's the album called? It's called Polarity. So you can find Mike Wartella, um, Polarity, on all that stuff. Yeah. Sing for us. What are you going to do? Okay. Um, I'm going to do a song from the album, actually. A little acoustic version of it. It's called Fallen Behind. Great. can take you away from me but I will always feel you close time can make even blind men see the ones we lose still leave a ghost I need to tell you from my mind 
oh, oh, oh. falling behind. Oh, 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 oh. I feel in my blood. Oh, 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 oh. it brings the blood. Oh, 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 oh. I need to take it from my mind. That was for you, Jim. <laughs> oh my god! Every song does that, need that, I think. I, I love that you literally ruined your ending yeah. <laughs> to make us laugh. Worth it. See, worth that's it. show business. <laughs> <laughs> your voice is nuts. Oh my Thank god, you sound so good. Thanks. Hope it was okay on the electronic weirdness. You know, it's you know nothing's fantastic on the electronic weirdness, but you are killer. Thank oh you. my god. Uh, I can't wait for all of this to be over so that we can all sit in a nightclub and cheer you and Please. and uh, cheer each other. I, I just, I yeah. can't wait. Oh, I Lisa watched... Lambert. Do you know her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she wrote a little show called Drowsy Chaperone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very good. I've heard of it. Yeah, I've, I've heard of it. Um, man, you just... Mm -hmm. You're just well, I have sat through many, many wonderful hours of you live at Birdland, and I can't wait to be loving and laughing you in person again. So Did I know that? Probably not, because that's what we do. We just hide in the audience, watch. How dare you? I have lots of friends that get to sing, and so I come and watch them. That's so funny. Well, I did not know that. Well, you're always invited. Can't wait. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you, buddy. I'll see you, see you soon. soon. Bye. Bye. If I could sing like that, I would never leave my house. I swear, I would just play my guitar, which I don't know how to play, uh, and and just sing and shout like that. I love it. Um, just want you to know, we are accepting tips. <laughs> I sound like a broken record. First of all, cringy. I'm going to take that word with me. Cringy from Hunter. That's a really good word because God knows we see a lot of cringy things in this world. Um, you are uh, certainly invited to donate to the PFF, Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation, and also to keep us online, pay for our platform, this whole this whole shebang that we got going here. Uh, but this week we will make a nice donation to the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation, thanks to your Venmos, PayPals. If you wanna write a check, let me know. I'll give you my home address. You know what I'm saying? Okay. <clears throat> um, Brandon Bain. This guy is smooth. He is so smooth. He's a jazz singer. He's a very snappy dresser, and he's here to entertain us. Please welcome Brandon Bain. Peace, Jim. What's up, man? <laughs> How are you? I'm maintaining, man. I'm feeling good. How about you? I'm good. I'm I'm mostly happy to see you, and you look good. What is that plaid jacket? I'm so enjoying it. This is my baby, man. I found it. Good price. It's matching my Capsulosity colors, black white and red so uh not quite christmas but look you know. we actually look we actually look very tartan together you you All and right. i both yeah platy we're forever plaid hosty, hosty. <laughs> we're hosty um how are you dealing with this crazy shutdown because you're used to working every night i know well you know at this time i'm working every night still in the sense that you know just trying to stay creative trying to stay inspired trying to stay healthy drinking a lot of water. So, you know, I'm happy to be here, especially here, virtual Birdland. I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm so glad. What are you looking forward to the most about all, getting all of this behind us and, and starting up again and getting into, you know, real life again? Well, I've been uh, shooting a lot of videos related to, uh, I do a platform called Capsulosity and I've been finding a lot of uh, talent, up and comers in the jazz scene, Broadway spoken word. And I feel that this time has been such a time to look within that when I talk to my fellow artists, 
they seem to be creating new things that they didn't know was in them. So, you know, hopefully we can get them on the platform. And, you know, that's what I'm looking forward most is to see how everybody has uh, grown uh, despite not having the places to play. They're still finding ways to make music and express themselves. Artists are, you, you can't keep us down. Uh, <laughs> we did a very cool event together a couple of years ago. And that's as much right. as you and I both love dressing up, we were completely outsuited by ex mayor David Dinkins. That's right. <laughs> look, look at that pink seersucker suit that guy had on. Yep. I guess when you become mayor, if you come, you become mayor wherever you go. So he was the mayor of that night, and uh, he's dressed uh, to impress for sure. David he Dinkins was what a what a character. What a what a great night that was. It right, was a thrill right. to meet him. Absolutely. Um, your music is such a hybrid. When I listen to you, I hear, you know, it's jazz, it's pop, it's soul. But what you have that a lot of people don't have, certainly that I know, is Calypso. <laughs> Where did your love of that music come from? Well, really, I always say in my shows that it's very important, the music you play around children, because my grandmother always played a lot of Calypso around the house. And at the time, I didn't understand what these people were saying because it's very tongue in cheek and uh, very risque in terms of language and stuff, but playful and, you know, storytelling. So she was a storyteller and she played the Mighty Sparrow and, and Calypso Rose. And my dad's a bass player. And he um, when he started that I was singing, I started singing in my mid 20s. He said, uh, you got to throw in some Calypso. And, he, and I was like, what could I throw in that people would understand? And he said, you know. Look at Harry Belafonte, one of these guys, and I just started studying their music. And it made my life uh, so much easier because by the time you play some Calypso and everybody's had a few drinks, they're <laughs> literally ready to jump in the line. And I've made them do that from Dizzy to uh, actually today is Harry Belafonte's birthday. He's 94. And Jim, you told me that I was the first person at Cast Party to ever sing the song Deo. <laughs> I remember that. Well, you you hosted a week long celebration of Caribbean uh, American heritage uh, at Dizzy's at Jazz at Lincoln Center. Right. Uh, so it, it must have been an extra thrill to meet this guy. Yeah. Come well, on look at that. First of all, <laughs> the other guy's not bad either. <laughs> that would be Usher and Harry Belafonte. Yeah, we're we're trying to keep up with him, man. At ninety four, he's like. You know, showing out, he, he looks great. And uh, as long as we take care of our health, hopefully we can have that type of career longevity. So uh, meeting him was great because uh, I never really got to study music in a classical sense, but I would just go out and try to find the people that are still doing it. And although he was not performing as a singer, he spoke a lot about his art and inspired a lot of people, myself included. So that was my education is going out to hear these people that are still doing it. Yeah. Yeah, especially in I the mean, 90s. When you think about, was it 1956? This is before I was born, right? Which is shocking. Um, <laughs> that that his his album Calypso, uh, where Deo was from, that thing was it sold over a million copies uh, back in the right. day. Calypso, and it brought that sound to the world. Uh, most people didn't know what that was. I'm sure. Right, you know, and. It's uh, it's one of those things that just carried on through the years. Like, I don't know if you remember the movie Beetlejuice. There was that scene where they're singing Jump in the Line and Deo. And uh, it's in a lot of music, uh, the, the rhythms and stuff. And it's just a powerful music and it's a lot of fun. You know, it's, it's, it's just something that when people hear, you know, it's not just getting off the plane in uh, the Caribbean somewhere and hearing Steel Pan behind you. When you really listen to what they were trying to say, it's a lot of fun, it's political, it's satirical, so um, very powerful music that I'm proud is a part of my heritage and also a part of my songbook now. So cool. Um, you're a videographer. Um, I love the story of how that started with the lottery. <laughs> right. So you know, I don't want to don't want to embarrass anybody, but there's some there's some gamblers in the family, and uh, I never won. But uh, at one point, uh, I was looking for a camera to start a video series, and it's called Capsulosity. So Capsulosity is a portmanteau, an English literary term that means capsule of the city. So I just thought that when I came on the jazz scene, I didn't realize that there were so many up-and-coming artists that were my age and younger still performing 
the music that my grandmother programmed me with. And uh, so I just started documenting it. This is like 2011. Most people had like very shaky, uh, you know, phone cameras, Blackberry video cameras. And uh, so I just wanted a camera. I grew up watching a lot of variety shows. Uh, and uh, I was just trying to recreate that type of element. And so uh, a friend recommended a camera to me. And I, I said, what's a camera that I can buy that won't look like shit? And, uh, <laughs> and he said, the Canon Mark II 5D was $2,600. And I asked for four numbers between zero and nine. And those numbers were seven, three, one, five. And I was watching the actual drawing. <laughs> and it came out. And I'm like, seven, three, one, five. And I won exactly $2,600. And I was like, I'm buying the camera. So I ran out, bought that camera, and I started Capsulosity. It's been 10 years since I've been shooting this. And we've had just many people, uh, some people that have been on cast party as well. Naika Sings, Gabrielle Stravelli, uh, Andy Bay, a lot of different people, John Hendricks. So it's, it's a great mixture of talent, and I'm, I'm so happy to be doing it. And um, I think it's probably, uh, I'm probably m more so known for that type of work than anything else, but I'm, I'm proud either way, so... Oh, man, that thing was supposed to happen. That <laughs> camera was supposed to be yours. That's right. Okay, sing for us. All right, so I'm going to sing a song called That's All, and I heard you telling your first guest about uh, the breath, and I'm just happy to be here as well. This uh, song is a song that I recorded with the A.L. Vilner Big Band on the CD Swing Out, if anybody's still buying CDs, but I hope you enjoy That's All. Great. I can only give you love that lasts forever And a promise to be near each time you call And the only heart I own For you and you alone That's all That's all I can only give you country walks springtime and a hand to hold when leaves begin to fall and a love whose burning light could warm the winter night that's all that's all there are those I am sure have told you that would give the world for a toy. I have are these arms to enfold you, and a love time can never destroy. But if you're wondering what I'm asking in return, dear, you'll be glad to know. My demands are small. Did it mean that you adore? But now and never more. That's all. That's all. Although I am sure who have told you they would give you the world for a toy. I have all these arms to enfold you, and the love time can never destroy. If you're wondering what I'm asking in return, day, you'll be glad to know. My demands are small. Let it be that you will adore, but now and ever more, that's all. That's all. So beautiful. All right. So great. Oh, my God. Brandon, you sound wonderful. Thank you.
you, man. I've been through a lot, as you might know. Uh, last year, when this CD was released, uh, I would say it was the 10th of July of 2019, we performed for Lincoln Center's Midsummer Night Swing, about 500 swing dancers. And the very next day, I was diagnosed with lymphoma, and uh, it took a lot out of me. It was a very tough ordeal, but you know, by the grace of God and some great healthcare workers and a positive mindset, I'm very happy to be here on Cast Party with Jim Caruso. <laughs> I mean, it makes me so happy to see you. Thank you. And hear you sounding so beautiful. What a what a year you've had. Everybody's had a weird year, but right, I mean, right. you really. It, it, that's a lot to go through and to come through it's so great and so, uh, I hope I, I wish such good health for you thank you Jim and one more thing I forgot to plug I have a new show on the Capsulocity Network if you check out C-A-P-S-U-L-O-C-I-T-Y dot com there's a new show called Art with Intention and it's just featuring New Yorkers around and we want to find out why they make the things they do so you sing a song you say <laughs> Why did you write that song? And then boom, art with intention. <laughs> you are, you're unbelievable. You are busy. Thank you. Will you come back and visit us sometime? Absolutely, Jim. And Great. hopefully, you know, we'll see each other back at Birdland. Thank you so much for having me here. Absolutely. And thanks for all that you do. Peace. And I want some Calypso next time. Absolutely. We'll work okay. on that. <laughs> Great. Take care, man. Great. Thanks, Peace. Brandon. All right. No problem. Now, come on. <laughs> I, artists are the best, aren't they? Um, I, I changed. First of all, his coat was so great, and I just couldn't uh, I, I couldn't be seen. But I put, look what I put on. Come on! You're welcome, America. You're welcome, fashion industry. Um... These are available. T-shirts, sweatshirts, pajamas, caps, mugs, masks, a plethora of crap. I just said that for Ruby. Um, Ruby, I, I feel like we should bring you out because, because we should. You oh, Ruby. Crap, and then I'm here. Is that why you said it? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that was a very cool show. It was great until you said crap. <laughs> I don't like it. Poo? Do you like poo? No, I like we have great goodies. Amazing goodies. Not I can't say, I can't say goodies. That well, doesn't... I can't say crap, Jim. So we've got to work. <laughs> well, that's on... perfect. So you say the other word and i'll say the other word we'll see um, who sells more i bet the person that says amazing goodies sells more <laughs> amazing crap no um i loved this show i loved everybody on it i think it was really fun we are getting uh very generous uh donations from people thank you all uh first of all some of you are just ludicrously generous every single week. Every week. And and I can't thank you enough. It keeps this going. Because obviously we can't do this. This the, the platform costs something. And um, so it's it's just uh, it's just a thrill to be able to keep doing it. What number is this? Is this 48? I think this is 48. We're, no, this is 47. Okay, we 47. just we we just aged ourselves. This is 47. Yeah. Yeah, 47. Uh, and then th we have our year anniversary coming up. What's I heard that Jim, be? I heard Jim is wearing pajamas. I am. I think I squealed. It's going to be no, so great. Uh, Ruby's in charge of that show. I usually do all the booking, <laughs> but I told Ruby, you do the year anniversary, you, and I want it all to be a surprise. I want, I want to know nothing. I just want to show up. And then Cher ruined it by texting him. So that's been blown. But the rest is going to be a surprise. I know. The entire Osmond family and Cher yeah. will yeah. be here. Not really. Um, I mean, maybe really. I don't know. Uh, I think this would be a good time to maybe see if Squiggs has finished his quick sketch yes. of the pajama cast party. All right. It's here and it's really good. Are you ready? Yes. I'm so excited. Okay. Justin Squiggs Roberts. And there it is. 
Oh my gosh. Look, look at that beautiful cast of characters. So cool. Now, put up his website, put up Squig's. And also, not yeah. just his website, but I promised that we would talk about this. I can't believe that we didn't talk about this. What? But Jim, mm. Squig also mm. did mm -hmm. Liza. Okay, yeah, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Um, well, I did kind of talk about it for a second up front, um, but this uh, Liza turns 75 on March 12th. Well, that's just crazy, especially considering I was at her 45th birthday party. <laughs> that's right when we met. But this thing is going to be a great virtual event hosted by Frank Delella, uh, produced by Daniel Nardiccio and Matt Berman, my great friend Matt Berman. Uh, and uh, the cast of characters is just crazy. It's Jason Alexander and Sandra Bernhard, and well, you can see the list there. Jonathan Groff and Cheetah, and uh, me and Billy. We're gonna do. We're gonna. We're involved, and Joel Gray, and it's just gonna be fabulous. Nobody deserves uh, a celebration more than Lucy Manusi, Liza Minnelli. <laughs> And you know, Jim, I think we might have shown this picture before, but I found it again and pulled it up because I am not involved in the Liza birthday. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, I know what you're going to show. We're best friends in my head, but, yes. you know, I don't want to scare her. Is but, this from when I introduced you to yeah, Liza Minnelli? Yeah. So I got, I, when I was seven years old, I saw the Liza with the Z special. And the next morning I cut off all my hair and did the Liza cut because I told my mom I was just convinced that that was the haircut for me. I had it for seven years, loved the pixie cut. Literally to this day, Jim, I kid you not, when I was in the chair getting my hair done yesterday, I said, I just missed the short hair. I'm this close to doing it again. Like I really, I really, really, really am. And I, wanted, on her birthday. and I wanted to meet Liza. It was my dream to meet Liza. And you made that happen. And so when I was, I think I was like nine or so in this picture. No, probably eight actually. Let's see it. But Look. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Look at that. You were shorter then. Yeah, I, I was shorter then. I was smaller then. The glasses changed. Um, so that cute. Was one of the best. Best nights of my life. I at, back at my family's home. I have that room, that picture framed on my wall. <laughs> so cute, so cute. Well, listen, Liza Minnelli, throw that picture up again. By the way, Squigs did that drawing. Yeah, that's in, what I was saying. In case I have to even tell you, that is a Squigs original. It's so gorgeous. Um, look, Melissa Manchester, Michael Feinstein, Joel, uh, Nathan Lane, Nathan. Yeah, it's really going to be quite a quite a thing. And it'll be right after the PFF uh, uh, benefits. So you can order in food, see that, see PFF, stick around for Liza. It's just going to be the best. You're going to have a theater-filled night. What more could you want? And then while you're feeling all warm and fuzzy and theatery, go on squigsonline.com and order a piece of art. Yeah, I mean he's he sells he has the caps and the mugs and the stuff, but he'll also do a, an original piece for you. Which I mean, uh, what could be better? There's what? always a reason for an original piece. I don't. Oh even my know gosh! Yeah, yeah. Up, I do have them all over my apartment. I have uh, Squig's drawings, and I mean all my friends are so talented. They're they're annoying actually. Okay, so PFF on Friday. No, yes on yes. Friday, Liza. Uh, on Friday, benefiting the Actors Fund. Next week, Pajama Cast Party, gonna be killer. Lumiri Tubo, Luke Hickey, one of the best tap dancers I've ever seen in my life, Tanya Grubbs, Jeff Grubbs, brilliant jazz, and Jonathan Grant, another brilliant jazz singer. Lumiri is a wonderful cabaret singer. Oh God, it's gonna be so good, you guys. It's, it's a never ending treasure trove of talent. You may quote me. <laughs> That's annoying. Um, I think we're done. We're even done a little early. That makes up for our three-hour shows. Uh, thank you all for, for joining us, for donating, for watching, for being so supportive, for clapping. 
and for coming back week after week. We love doing this. Thanks for uh, joining us at Pajama Cast Party. Good night. Ah. Thanks for watching Pajama Cast Party. To follow us on YouTube, just hit subscribe. Click on that little bell and we'll keep you updated on future shows. You can also follow us on Instagram at Jim Caruso's Cast Party. The end.